We will learn about aggregate functions, the group by clause, the having clause, and five common types of aggregate functions by coding together on sqlguild.com and viewing visual demonstrations. Timestamps are provided in the description. First of all, let's clear up what an aggregate function is. An aggregate function takes a set of values. For example, we can take the entire column for age from our people table. That will be our input to our aggregate function. One of the built-in aggregate functions in SQL is called average, which is written simply as A, V, G. We will make our ages the input by putting them in parentheses. Now SQL takes in all the values from our input, calculates the average, and gives us a single value as our result. That's the idea behind aggregate functions. Take a set of values for input and apply an aggregate function on it and return one single value as the output. Okay, we are ready to code up our first aggregate function. Hop on the link at sqlguild.com. Select the People Database button to configure the database for our example. First, we will write our select clause using the average aggregate function with the age attribute as our input, specified in parentheses. Finally, we specify we are getting the data from the people table. When we click the execute button, we can see we get the correct value of 16. Let's work with a second type of aggregate function called count. You can see we write the function out just as the word count is spelled. We'll use age again as the input set. The aggregate function will take in the inputs one by one and then yield the number of items in the set, which is four. Okay, let's consider a new case. So far, we have been treating our inputs as multisets. A multiset is a set of data that allows duplicates. We can treat our set of data as a regular set, where duplicates are ignored, by putting the distinct keyword at the start of our parentheses. In our case, we have only two unique values. Let's remove the duplicate for 7 and the duplicate for 25. Now we get a count of 2 for the number of unique ages. Okay. Now we can code this up on sqlguild.com. We want to use the people database again. First, we write the select clause and use a count aggregate function. We'll use age as the input for our function. Then we specify people as our table we are getting data from. When we run the query, we get four total age values. Now, if we add the distinct keyword to prefix our input set, then we get the number of unique age values, which is two. Now, let's quickly breeze through a summary of three more very common aggregate functions. We have the minimum aggregate function. This function just returns the minimum value in our set. In this case, we get 7 as the smallest age. Then we have the maximum aggregate function. This just returns the largest value, which in our case is 25. Finally, we have sum. This function just adds all the values in the set and then returns the total. In our case, all the ages add up to 64. Now, let's learn how to use the group by clause. Let's say we have a classic select from where SQL statement. At the end of our SQL statement, let's add the clause group by type. This means we want to form rows in the table into groups for each value for type. The first type value is kid, which we have highlighted in blue, so we will group them up into one group. We'll do the same thing for the value of adult for the type attribute. For each group, the rows will always have the exact same singular value for the attributes that we have grouped by, so we will remove the dividing line for demonstration purposes. Now we can see that for each group, the rows inside always have the same value for the type attribute. For our queries, instead of checking each row, we check each group, where our grouped by attributes have a set of same named attributes that we treat as the common value. So the first group has a type attribute value of kid and the second group has a type value of adult. On the other hand, for the attributes we didn't group by, we have a bunch of individual values that may or may not be equal. This situation commonly triggers an error, although exceptions may occur with specific database management systems. While in this case, all age values are identical, typically, we will have a range of ages which complicates selecting a single value for the group. To resolve this, we must derive a single value for the entire group from a set of values. Here, the aggregate function plays a pivotal role. We opt for the average function for age calculation. Consequently, for the first group, we obtain 7, and for the second group, 25. Okay, 
Let's go and do one example step by step that uses an aggregate function that includes a group by clause. First, we run the from clause. This just tells us to get our data from the people table. Next, we run the where clause. The where clause filters out all the rows where the age is less than 10. We can use the group by clause to group by type. Let's remove the division for the type values in each group. Finally, let's run the select clause. For the first group, we take the common type value and apply the average aggregate function to all the ages in the first group. Then we do the same thing for the second group, and now we have the average age for each type without including people under 10 years old. We can actually add a having clause to our queries that have a group by clause. The having clause is run after the group by clause. Let's assume the from clause ran, then the where clause ran, and then the group by clause ran. We can see we have two groups based on type. Now it is time for the having clause to run. The having clause filters out groups that don't satisfy the predicate specified. In this case, we are filtering groups with an average age that are not under 30. For our first group, the kids have an average age of 14, which satisfies the predicate of average age being under 30. For the second group, the adults have an average age of 33, which does not satisfy the requirement of having an age under 30, so we filter out this group. When we run our select clause to finish off the query, we only get one row for the kids group. Generally speaking, null values are ignored when using aggregate functions. If we run count on this table, we get two because there are two values that aren't null. One exception is if we do the count aggregate function with the asterisk as the argument. This includes the count of null values in addition to non-null values. If we do the count aggregate functions on an empty set, then we get zero. If we apply other aggregate functions on an empty set, then we just get the null value as a result. Thank you for watching. In part two, we will do more practice problems and learn more complex aggregate function topics.